Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone, and welcome to another special edition of the Good Leader Podcast. I am here with one of the usual sp- suspects, Lemuel. How you doing over there, my friend? Doing great. You're doing a great job, by the way. I like Thank that you. intro music. I'm liking the change we bring. You got the horn today? Because I feel I like I feel I like do. it's a horn day. Are you ready? Yeah, just a test. Here we go. Let's see. Oh. Uh, oh, Lim, well, there okay, there hold on. I uh, messed it you up. did. That was like, you know what? Now, <laughs> you know what? I take it back. I take all those compliments back. Next episode, so, I'll brag on you again. We'll see. We'll see. You know we're what? We're working on it. That's like you had a great start right off the line. Boom. And you took off and then you, you trip. It's like those videos where you jump over the first hurdle and you do trip. But that's yeah. okay. Yeah. We're, you know what? Mistakes are allowed. That's okay. That's a great part of what we're going to talk about today because we're going to talk about the learning process, the growing process, a great learning structure called From Play to Grow, because we have a special guest, Mark Collard, in the house. Mark hails from Australia. Mark, I could, I could just talk for days about you, but first, before I get the official introduction, also want to welcome a friend of the show, been on the pod before, Paradigm Shift regular, Kyle Price. Hello, Kyle. Hey. You'll notice it's an all-male crew today. That was not on purpose, but the ladies are gone. Ange and Jess, they are off-duty, off-work, but we're holding down the fort here because of our special interview with Mark. As you all know, the Good Leader Podcast is brought to you by Paradigm Shift. We do leadership training development all across the globe, and in our travels, we have met this gentleman, Mark Collard, who is, Kyle, would you say, would you say he's like your celebrity crush? professionally oh yeah you, yeah really, you think so like a little fanboy yeah we're definitely <laughs> kyle and i i'm just a little fanboy and the reason for the podcast is because we are definitely fanboys of mark it's like do you know when someone's really famous in a very specific you know you have like taylor swift who doesn't know taylor swift if you right. don't know taylor swift you're living under a rock right you know even i know taylor swift yeah and i practically do live under a rock even football players now know taylor swift even football players fantasy football players all across the globe <laughs> that's uh that's taylor travis's swift. girlfriend right so there are some yeah exactly travis's girlfriend yeah. taylor people know so beyonce you know what I'm saying? i guess i'm just thinking of female singers but I don't sure know, who's another like world famous like, rihanna rihanna thank you you, <laughs> you stick with the trend uh but then there's probably uh, mark is there like an australian person that is really famous in australia but it's probably you know what i'm saying it's like they're they're and you would know nationally the world? famous but either or i may not know around the world oh. you know what i'm saying like like you know who they are well, but i might not know who they are because i'm from oklahoma once upon a time okay. there was a little dog called bluey that only australia knew no way so bluey started out just in australia just in australia are you serious and his her sister bingo yeah, yeah. So that was Australian. We kept it to ourselves. Then someone said, I reckon other people might laugh about this. You reckon right. And that's <laughs> all I'm seeing. Bluey's everywhere. Oh, everywhere man. I but I now. didn't think, I, I, I was wrong. I didn't realize Bluey like started, I thought it was like an Australian theme, you know, or it's, it's Australian made. Yeah. But I didn't realize it was like a homegrown product. Like initial like worldwide initial, yeah. release, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I thought it was like a worldwide sure. release. No. release. No. no. No, we're keeping it to ourselves. But I in a caring, that. sharing way, we thought we'd just bring in our other brothers and sisters. See, that's a great example. And then I also, okay, let me give you another Australian example. So, like, uh, rugby. Mm. Is rugby pretty big in Australia? They tell me it is. But you're not a big rugby, rugby fan. No, because I live in Victoria. There is only one code of football in Victoria, and that's Australian rules football. AFL. Oh, okay, now what the heck is that? <laughs> So we have all the codes of, of football okay. in Australia. So all right. we have to call yours. Yeah. Your American, American football, football is gridiron. Okay. Oh, I like that. Ooh, yeah. I like that. We, That's we a very American. It sounds <gasps> Playing on the gridiron. Yeah. And then we have the, Lord. the world <laughs> game. Football, the, which that's we soccer. have to call soccer. Yeah, mm. okay. We have all the other. Hey, you guys call soccer soccer? We do. Because what? Because we have all the other codes. Oh, man. I call it football, then it gets That confusing. makes me like Australia even more. They call soccer soccer. <laughs> I've we been do. calling it football to Mark for the past two days because I thought he called it football. <laughs> <laughs> and he was talking about he was talking about some ASL. Yeah. Uh, AFL. So you're Australian. Yeah, not American Sign Language? American no, Sign no. Language. <laughs> or Australian Sign Language. Or Australian Sign Language. Oh, dang. Yes. Oh, I'm out of my good. element here. So rugby good. league, rugby union, Australian rules football, gridiron, soccer. There's five. We've That's got all the codes marvelous. of football. Wow. In Australia. A lot That's of lot feet sports. sports. Buffalo AFL, which is of all of those codes, by far the biggest. Okay, what's the biggest difference between AFL mm-hmm. and gridiron? Is it kind of like gridiron football? I mean, similar? It's exactly like your game. Okay. It's, we just happen to call it gridiron. Wait a minute. But what's so AFL? It, AFL well, is completely different. Oh, that's what oh, great. Okay, yeah. so what is AFL? First of all, you need to imagine your football field twice as long. Ooh. Yes. Wow. And okay. about four times, four to five times wide. Oh, that is gigantic. It's I want to watch this. That is huge. 18 players per team, and you kick the ball. Okay. And you can catch the ball. We call that a mark. 
and you only Indulgent. pass the ball if you can't if you can't kick it. You have to handball it, which okay. means you place it on one hand and use your other hand to knock it. Okay. Into the hands, you cannot yeah. ever throw the ball. Sounds Unlike like croquet. Your game. That's another big difference. That okay. This is fascinating. Yeah. Now, if we visit you in Australia, because it's on the docket. The reason the Mark is here, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Paradigm Shift Leadership offers trainings, and Mark collaborated with us for a couple of trainings over the last few days. It's been remarkable. But it's been phenomenal. And to my earlier point, Mark is famous in our world. You yeah. know, it's like, okay, yep. if you, you know, whoever the Australian, who is the AFL, who's like an AFL stud then? Oh, then I'm going to give you the captain of my football team, oh, the Carlton Football Club, Patrick Cripps or Cripper. Cripper? What Cripper. a great name. Cripper. Cripper. Oh my gosh, yeah. that is. He's captain. He won the Brownlow medal, which is like the best player of the AFL last year in 2022. Cripper. He could, cr I've never even seen this man, but I know he could crush every bone in my body. Oh, yes. Like, I'll, seriously. I'll show you a quick photo. I wish you would. <laughs> I wish you would. So the Cripper, like that, he's famous regionally or in the, in this, in this, within Australia. Within Australia. Yeah. But in the States, we don't know who he is. No. So I might say, you know, it's like, uh, like if I say Shay Gilgis Alexander, do you know who that is? Uh, no. He's a basketball player for the mm. Oklahoma City Thunder. Oh, cool. He's probably a little, you know, NBA is kind of a worldwide game, but mm -hmm. my point is there are these levels of fame. And, Hey, if we want to do a quick leadership lesson here, you know, one of my favorite quotes is Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, mm -hmm. Comparison is the thief of joy. Yep. I think all too often we think of success. We think of mega success. We think of like, oh, I'm not Beyonce. I'm not Taylor Swift. I'm, you know what I'm saying? We, in our own little worlds, we're like, I'm going to start a company and we're going to be gigantic. And you're looking to, you know, get hired by Google and Apple and they're going to be your clients. You can have a ridiculous amount of satisfaction, success, happiness, contentment and be known by relatively few people. There are, what, 7 billion people in the world? That's a lot. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks. You know, and you're not going to be known by 7 billion. There's like a handful of celebrities. So here we are. There's this national Australian football league champion. Crippa. With the, with the great Crippa. <laughs> with the greatest nickname ever. And we don't even know who the heck he is. <laughs> no. And that's okay. That's totally fine. You know? Mark then. And I don't want to oversell this. We're, this is where we fanboy. Yeah. This is where we fanboy. For sure. Okay. Mark has been doing what we do, experiential-based education, mm -hmm. for over three decades. He has written the books that we read. Like, he's, Mark is the kind of guy that we were, like, reading his books and being like, man, this guy's awesome. Yep. I don't even know who this is. And then we met him, and it's like, wow, he's even better in person. Starstruck. Starstruck, <laughs> yeah. Starstruck. So it's, it's a privilege to have you here, Mark. If you don't know who Mark Collard is, you should check him out. You can Google him up, Mark Collard, C-O-L-L-A-R-D. You can also check out Playmeo. That's P-L-A-Y-M-E-O, seven characters, Playmeo.com. And you can learn all sorts of stuff. What I love about Playmeo is Mark offers all kinds of free resources. So if you're out there leading groups of any kind, leading meetings, you're an organization, if you're a manager, director, even, you know, it doesn't matter where you are, you've got, I'm going to have a Sunday school group that I'm gathering, or we're going to have a, a friend group come over, or I, heck, I'm just with my family, and I'd like to do something a little bit different. Experiential-based education is not for classrooms only. It can be used everywhere, and Mark is a great resource, so we have him today. We're going to interview him momentarily. We're going to talk about his model of experiential-based learning and growth and the word play. The word play, I think, is often misunderstood, misrepresented, and underutilized. But before we get to that, I've got a fun game for you. Kyle specifically will love this. Oh, great. It's Mark, though. So, Mark, this is kind of the pre-interview interview. This is how Australian is this. So I've got 10 things here that when you Google up Australia and you try to learn, because Australia, you guys are, you know, you, you, you kind of got a reputation down there. You're down under, number one. If I say down under, mm -hmm. that's Australia, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Like Australia, I've wanted to go to Australia forever. I've never been. Lemuel, have you been to Australia? I have not been. Um, you sing a lot of songs from Australia. I do. You know? I'm a Hillsong fan. Hillsong fan. Akadaka. What the heck is that? ACDC, they're Australian. Yeah. Oh, ACDC's really? Australian? I yeah. I not know that. No yes. way. 100%. Absolutely. Blowing my mind. I did not yep. know that. I know a lot of people don't. I did. Okay, well, I feel better, but we wow. Streets named after them in Perth where they were first based. That's wow. ACDC yeah. Street. Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Is. That was a joke, it but well, it's it true. <laughs> well, also, electrical currents named after them. So, true. very incredible <laughs> stuff. Way to go. So, I'm going to name something, and you tell me on a scale of 1 to 10 of like, wow, that is legitimate, that is Australian, we all know it, that's a real thing, or like, that's a zero, that's kind of a myth, I've never even heard about it. If yeah. Mark hasn't heard about it, it ain't Australian enough yeah. for him, it ain't Australian enough for me. Or Crippa. Or Crippa. Crippa. So, and I'm excited about this because I gotta prep, we're coming to you, do we know the dates that we're gonna go work with Mark? Uh, we're gonna go to Australia. Yeah, December 4th, right? Ish? 
Yeah, of next yeah, year. Around next there. Year. So if you're planning, I'm, I'm letting the listeners know because they're going to want to know. We're going to we're going to have a live pod, live podcast down there. We're going to have all sorts of stuff. We're going to have trainings. They can fly down there. If you've ever been looking for a reason to go to Australia, and the the Sydney Opera House wasn't enough, the tourism wasn't enough, the Great Barrier Reef wasn't enough. Right now, the Good Leader Podcast now is going to be that tipping point. Well, you know, hey, Jared and Kyle and Paradigm Shift's going to be down there. Come Good on, honey, let's spend that money. Let's, let's go. go down there and see it. All right, here we go. The first one, Fairy Bread. Oh. Uh. You can't have a party without fairy bread. What? Very Australian. My son just had his 11th birthday party, and my wife knows any birthday party is not a party until you have fairy what bread. What the heck's fairy bread? Give us the 10 Ooh. seconds. What is it? Uh, white bread, <laughs> okay. often known as... Uh, bread. Bread. <laughs> Butter. Okay. Or margarine, depending okay. on your, you know, which side of the street right. you're born. Yeah. And then you sprinkle hundreds and thousands. Yeah. Now, we call them hundreds and thousands. What do uh, you call them? Sprinkles. 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 Uh, There's sprinkles. sprinkles would be fine. Yeah. You call them hundreds and thousands? Because there are, it's a lot. have you ever counted them? There no, are hundreds, there are hundreds and thousands. And thousands. <laughs> Not once. That's no. why they're called that. Well, we call them sprinkles. I haven't gotten uh, that far. And in preparation for the podcast, what you described is exactly what it looks like. Yes. So that's, okay, fairy bread. 10 out of 10, fairy bread. There you go. Wow. Bing, bing, bing. All right, Sounds well, like I'm toast. I'm on eating some fairy bread. All right, here we go. Number two, Uluru. Uluru? Uluru. Oh, I'm saying it wrong. Yeah, yeah, Uluru. That is the indigenous name for. Uh, this monolithic mo- monolithic rock towards the center of oh, our continent. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is it called? It, it used to be called Ayers Rock. Ayers is rock. that right? Is that the yeah. same thing? See, Ayers. this is where I'm showing my ignorance. No, it's exactly the same thing. Okay. Uh, but it is now completely controlled by the First Nations. Very cool. That area. Oh, it's like a Denali. It's, Denali. it's a Denali. It's like thing. our Denali. And yeah. increasingly, more and more things are now adopting I love that. their yeah. uh, indigenous They're, name. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, like Mount McKinley in the United States is now referred to as Denali. Oh, hey, good job, First Nations. Yeah. yeah. Good job. Mm. I love that. Okay, here we go. Number three, Bush Rangers. Bush Rangers is the name of a cricket team. That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, it is, but it's not in the vernacular. People okay. would understand it, yeah. but it's not okay. something we would use day to day. It ain't fairy mm. bread. It ain't fairy bread. Okay, all right. Okay, I'm going to give that a five. We, yeah. I'm going to give it a five. Yeah. Okay, five mm. out of ten. All right, here we go. Lamington? Oh, Again, you're talking parties. Uh, so in Lamington, imagine a sponge cake okay. cut into cubes, so six sides, uh, rolled in chocolate sauce. Oh, my. And then oh rolled my. in coconut. Oh, my. Oh, I want oh, that. Oh, baby. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. I want that. And you Australians do dessert well. well. And it's delicioso. It is <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And, it, and it's, a, a, it's, a, it's a sweet treat. Yeah. And we'll Surely. feature at many grandparents' afternoon teas. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, this is fantastic. Washington's or Lamos, as we want. Lamo. Do you guys have a tea time? Is that carried over? We do have a tea time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I like that. That's something America does wrong, by the way. Tea Honey time? Was, yeah. Well, I've, I haven't got to travel a lot, but I've been to, you know, a yeah. co- dozen countries or so. Been around. And whether it's tea time or like in a lot of South American countries, there's like an afternoon coffee break. Like, like cafecito. A legit, like, yeah, cafecito. And it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We don't do that. Mm-hmm. We're sitting here working. We Sweet value tea our hour. time. I know. You also, I learned something this for, this from you. You When you visited us years ago, I said that we were going to take a trip. And you're like, oh, where are you going to go? And I, I can't remember where it was. And I said, yeah, we're going to be there for like three days. And you're like, oh, three days? That's like our travel time. Like we when we go on a, a trip, you take it's like a month or more, right? Yep. I think I think we got to learn something there. You know, we mm. Americans, we yep. got we to gotta vacation better. Slow down. I, I got a couple more for you. How am I doing I, on this list, though? This is pretty good, right? It's very I did my good. research for you. Yeah. Okay, here we go. I'm, I'm ready for more. Feral... Or feral camels. Feral camels. Feral camels. Okay. Not <laughs> Kyle, look at that. Terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> they would be because they're very big. And yeah. there can be a lot of them. There are literally tens of thousands of camels in Australia. Huh. And, of course, they were imported. They're not indigenous to the culture. Okay, this is Or great. indeed the land. Yeah. But they were used to transport supplies and okay. people. Yeah. With the original explorers of the continent when we first colonized the, the continent. Okay. And of course, they were just released when we no longer needed them. Okay, this is great. As one they does. They now procreated. Wow. Now there are tens of thousands of them. Because when you think of Australia, you don't think of camels. You think no. of kangaroos. You think of like, because I heard kangaroos are just everywhere, right? Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. So that's cool. But camels, no. That's no. Not, you're educating. You know. You know. The, I don't know if you know this. You're on a regionally famous podcast, Ooh. and so you know you're you're educating the masses right now. Lemuel, did you know about the feral I did camels? Not know. That's good stuff, right? Is there, feral. I'm, I'm guessing there's feral. maybe not say? camel hunting, right? Probably not legal. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. I yes. don't know that they're protected species, but... Camel poacher. I don't know how you'd throw one on the top of your roof of your car to take it home. <laughs> it might be a little yeah. big. Yeah. Also, what are you going to do? Like camel meat? That's camel like jerky. The camel jerky? Yeah. It's got to be some tough meat. Yeah. No way. I heard camel milk's good. Oh. 
All right, number six. I got all of you guys with that. Oh. <laughs> yeah, like I'm drinking a lot of camel milk in Muskogee, Oklahoma. Uh, yeah, that's where we put our coffee. We don't have soy milk. We have camel no, milk. Okay. That sounds if like... you need a dairy substitute. That sounds a, biblical to me. It does. Oh, I'm sure camel milk is a thing. Yeah. Surely. Yeah. Yeah. If you're, like, living in the desert... That's a mammal. It's a mammal. Yeah. yeah. It's all right. Through. Okay, let's do a couple more. You guys enjoying this? I got a couple more. Absolutely. That I got to know the truth on yeah. chicken salt. Oh, chicken salt. Chicken yeah, salt. absolutely. So you, you gotta get your fish and chips. Yeah. Okay, and this is perfect because every time I'm saying something, I have no idea. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you don't follow us at Paradigm Shift Leadership <laughs> on YouTube and Instagram and everywhere, if you're not following us, every time I say something, Kyle and Lemuel are like, "What?" <laughs> like their face is like, <laughs> "Is Jared <laughs> making this <laughs> up?" It's Absolutely. Like, as, I did my Chicken research, salt. but Mark is like, "Oh, oh yeah. yeah, chicken yeah, salt." And I'll often say yes. So yes. You get often <laughs> chips, and then of course there's well, what sort of salt? Yeah. And so it's just regular, come as you are, garden variety salt. Or chicken salt. And chicken salt is just tasty. That's very, what... very, very tasty. I don't think it's got anything to do with chickens, <laughs> but you would often put it on a chicken if you're having okay. roast chicken. Not yeah. that I would know, but that's what people tell me. Yeah. And so chicken salt, you will also find on crisps, which we also call chips. Uh, yeah. yeah. It gets a bit confusing because yeah. we also have the hot chips, which you call fries yep. chips. So you could put it on in, wow. in both places. Okay. Chicken salt. Chicken salt. I didn't know. Yeah. I'm. Yes, Kyle. Can I uh, add my own uh, How Australian Is It prompt? Sure, what do you got? Well, I was just thinking about it. You you may have this on your list, Jared. I don't know. Go for it. Uh, But I use Marmite quite a bit in a lot of my cooking, and I know that some Australians prefer Vegemite. Mm -mm. How Australian is it? Oh, it's more Australian than Hugh Jackman. Is that Uh, really? Than Cripper. Really? Wow. Like, I'm one of those rare Australians who travel without it. Oh my god, you you tra- people travel with Absolutely. it overseas? Absolutely, travel packs. Absolutely. Wow. So I would have it. <laughs> I thought this was got a my joke. toothpaste in my Vegemite. Vegemite thing was like a caricature no. or. No. Really? No, Vegemite is the thing. You guarantee you will find it in every pantry in Australia. Wow. Okay. And most people have it every day, and we definitely do in the Collard household. My wow. My little boy, that's all that happened on his lunch at school. This is Vegemite. Wow. It's strong, right? It's, it's a strong, strong taste. Once regarded, what was it? An article in the New York Times a long, long time ago. It looks like uh, axle grease and tastes like rusty nails. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty close proximate for oh, it. Wow. That's yeah. like Marmite. That's wow. what Marmite looks that like. That sounds delicious. It is. Yeah. Can't it wait is to get some of that. Exceptionally salty. You know, okay. in eons from today, when they dig up archaeological artifacts of our time, <laughs> they're going to find intact jars of Vegemite yeah. that will be as tasty now as it will be Wait, that, then. <laughs> that's so good. Oh my goodness gracious. Yeah, the, hey, Minute Work, they had it. They exposed the world to it. That's right. They really did. Oh, okay. The Vegemite sandwich. That's right, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Isn't that Minute Work? Yeah, Minute so. Work. Makes yeah. sense. That See? was their song. All right, yeah. I got two more for you that I got to know. I'm ready. The Ashes. Oh. The Ashes, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Great story. It's the ashes as a trophy. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That is whenever uh, Britain or England play yeah. Australia in the game of cricket. Yes. Oh, okay. Other conversation. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So there's cricket. And if you go back 120 years, the original match between Australia and England. Okay. Uh, Australia beat England. Because England Ooh, kind of developed the game. Yeah. These upstarts from the colony came out yeah. and actually beat the parent, com- you know, oh, parent I love company. Oh, Yeah, hey. absolutely. It's a real so underdog tale. Commonalities between did. America real and Australia. Oh, That's yeah. what I say. So they took <laughs> the bales. Now, there's these little wooden sticks that sit on the top of three uprights. Hey, don't act like I don't know cricket over here. Okay, good. So the All bales. Right. They took yeah. the bales. Yeah, the bales. Ready to go. Burned them. Oh, took now that's the awesome. ashes. Oh, dang. And put them into a little urn. Because the next day, the papers <gasps> reported that this was the death of English <sighs> cricket. Oh, dang. And so they burned the ashes of the bales, believing that England could sink no lower. It's a real power yeah. so move. every time Australia plays England, which is normally about every couple of years, they play for the ashes. It's literally about as big as your hand. This little, little wooden urn with the ashes of those bales from 120 years ago. Okay, that is one of the coolest like sports Dang. trophies slash stories I've ever heard. Mm-hmm. That is awesome. Stick yeah. it to the man. The ashes. Burn the ashes. <laughs> All right. Well, I, got, I had one more, but we got to stop on the ashes because that's a real high note. Uh, we're going to take a break, and when we come back from the break, we are going to talk to Mark a little more seriously. Although I could just talk about Australia uh, the, the entire ready. time. Yeah, that's I'm really fun. Uh, that was great. When we get back from the break, we are going to talk about uh, a model. Is it fair to say model? Yeah, I think it's a framework yeah, or a it's model. It's a framework yeah. or a model. Play to grow. When we get back after this break.
Have you ever wondered about a specific leader? Maybe came up in conversation and you didn't really know about that person. Say it's, uh, you know, Simone Bolivar, a name that you may have heard, might not know about. Well, we have a resource at ps.company slash store called Leader versus Leader. It's one part learning about leaders and leadership, one part activity so that you can see different aspects of great leaders and learn more about your own leadership capabilities. Find Leader versus Leader cards at ps.company slash store. Dynamite commercial you got over there, Lemuel. Man, what a beautiful voice. What a beautiful voice. Kyle, do you know who uh, made that drop? That no. Dynamite commercial? Who was that? Oh, come on. Don't be teasing me. Those beautiful pipes you got over there. Thanks. Mark, did you know Kyle was a singer? Is no. a singer? Oh, well, I did yesterday. I discovered he's got... Did you really? Yeah, he's, he's got on yesterday. Spotify. He's, he, we oh, played yeah. some of his music. Yeah, actually, oh, Kyle's yeah. really talented. Thanks. Yeah. Really talented singer. You never guess it. <laughs> <laughs> Not by looking at me. <laughs> Just kidding. That Just dumb kidding. mug. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, I, I lied. I have one more. That Pavlova. Ah, uh, I was wondering because that would normally follow straight after a lamington. Would it really? Yeah, go to it's a, a dessert too. Yeah, fairy bread, lamington, and pavlova. Okay. Pavlova uh, is made up of two parts. Okay. There's the outer crispy, uh, crunchy part. Okay. Which is made of egg whites. Okay. Mm. And a ton of sugar. Okay. So you bake it, so it's really fragile. Mm. And then on the inside, you just fill it with cream and passion fruit and maybe some other types of exotic fruits on the top. Cool. And it's sweet. Very, mm. very sweet. So there's a, yeah, there's a bit of a spongy feel to part of the pavlova, but it's mostly quite crunchy. So if you know meringue. Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's like a really oh, okay. large meringue. Okay. With lots of cream and oh, man. veggie, uh, veggies, uh, fruits on the top. This sounds delicious. It really is. And again, wow. now, Australians will tell you that we made up pavlova. Yeah. But to be fair, it actually came from New Zealand. But we oh. kind of think that they're our brothers and sisters. So yeah. we, we've adopted them as part of the Australian creative uh, enterprise. Okay. Much to the chagrin of the New Zealanders who actually made it up. Yeah, mm -hmm. no doubt. <laughs> yeah. So, so New Zealand just kind of got little brother syndrome? Yeah. Okay, thank Big you. Time. That that answers a lot of my questions. Yeah. All right, excellent. <laughs> well, as much as I would love to just keep talking about Australia, Kyle and I are just going to, we're just going to throw questions at you because you are right. a treasure trove of knowledge. Mm. If you're an experience-based practitioner, you will be familiar with a lot of our language. For most of our listeners, we might try to break something down or pause if we use some quick kind of jargon that is used in experience-based circles or even the word like facilitator. We use that word a lot. Basically, a facilitator is just someone who is leading the meeting or leading the program of the day. But Mark, within that framework, you have a framework specifically that you've developed over the years. And this isn't something you had 30 years ago. Mm -mm. This is within the recent, fairly recent history really, yeah. that you put this language to it. So describe to us when you start working with a group mm. and you want to accomplish connection with yep. that group or yep. learning growth yep. with that group, which I think just about everybody listening, mm. if you're listening to the Good Leader Podcast. Mm. What's, you know, leadership takes a group and you're leading people, whether this is your home, this is your place of worship, this is your, your place of work, or any communal organization or group, these principles apply. Tell us about this play mm. to grow. Yeah. The, the work that I do is summed up in three words, help people connect. Mm. And I happen to use group games and activities to achieve that. And in fact, I often view any program or keynote or energize or whatever, whatever I'm doing and I'm standing before a group, I think of in terms of what is the difference that I wanna make in the time that I'll be with them? So earlier today, we ran a three hour program. I think ahead of, okay, when we get to the three hour point, what difference will I want to have made? And I can recall from the perspective of speaking with my mentors and you know, my career has spanned now professionally over 33 years, I would ask them questions like, Carl, Mary, Jim, Mark, how did you manage to make that work? And they were never able to give me a clear answer. And it became really inadequate as I got further and further into my career and conducting training and, and people would often just view it as group games and activities, but I still achieved a certain outcome. And the answer to the question, well, how did you make that happen? It was like, uh, I don't know, just kind of made it up. It was my intuition. And what I discovered through a process of writing a book called Serious Fun, which was my first attempt to write down this model and this framework of how I achieve this difference with the groups I work with. The, the, the coach that I had at the time had stopped me when I was describing my process and he said, oh, stop right there because I just used the word intuition. 
And he said a really powerful thing that set me off on a trajectory. He said, first of all, there is no such thing as intuition. It's like, ah, what do you mean? Mm. You know, it's a word, I understand it. Everyone uses it. Yeah, yeah, I know that. But there is no such thing as intuition. It's just unexplored process. Unexplored process. It was like, bang, hit me in the middle of the forehead. And at that point, I really dived in. I leaned in to understand, okay, what is it that I'm actually not exploring in my mind are the steps that I'm taking. And now it's, it's, it's now percolated long enough. Since even that book, nine years later, I've now got this newer thought leadership around that process. And that's what I can describe to you, that play to grow model. I don't even know if that's the name of it. That's all I, I give it at the moment. But it's made up of five steps. It's still a sequence. It's a, it builds one on top of the other. But it starts with play. You know, there's no accident it is forms part of the name of my business and my website, Playmeo. In fact, that was one of my prerequisites. Any domain name had to have the word play in it because it is the absolutely the foundation of everything that I do. It's got to be playful. But I, for the listeners out there to understand it's more than just playing a game. I understand societally that's how we'll understand it. But I want to expand people's understanding. And that's what happens in a training program. They go, oh, yeah, that was more than just playing. That, there was something else going on here. So play is like flow. If you're familiar with that scientific term, it's those moments in your life where you get so absorbed by what you're doing and not aware of what's going on and you want it to continue and you volunteer, you want to be there, no one's forcing you, all those things. There's no win-lose. That's flow. And it's also a great proxy for play. So when you've got that play, when I bring people to that space, and you'll note in the trainings that we've run, Jared, that I start off with, I invite you to play. Mm. I, right from the get-go, because I know the difference I can make when they take up that invitation. Now it's on me to create an environment in which they are willingly wanting to enter into that space. Because an invitation is not enough. I now need to create an ins a space for that to happen. So it must start with play. Why? If you use the other proxies of flow or fun, it's because it's contagious. You know, when others are having fun, it's like a yawn. Someone yawns, you yawn. It, it's, it's that contagion that, that, that spreads. It's also really hard to look cool when everyone else is having a great time. Hmm. Uh, and, and so all of those elements make it really easy for people to engage with it. They, they can see that it's going to be fun. They're not going to be threatened. So think of the programs that I've run this week. You know, people are actually really eager to lean in. And, and that's because of the design and it's the framework. So it starts with play. There's nothing, nothing lower. If you have to imagine it as a triangle, that's the base. Everything rests on that base. And then, and I'm really clear about my language here, it provides opportunities for interaction. So you engage them with something that is fun and playful, that in, invites flow. And next thing you know, they're interacting. You might have leaned in. You don't even know the name of the person, but suddenly you're actually working together. You're working on something that we haven't even started the program on, like the unofficial start, as I call it. They're now engaged with that. So play provides opportunities for interaction. And I'm really clear about the word opportunity. Again, no one's got a gun to their head. This is something that I invite you into if you choose. And if they feel like this is going to be something worthwhile, then they'll give it a go. That's the next level. That's level number two is interaction. You can never have too much interaction. Never, I've never had a teacher come up to me and say, oh, Mark, if you could just teach me how to disengage my group. <laughs> They're always <laughs> looking for more engagement, more ways to interact. And on that basis of play, interaction is that next step. Interaction, interaction provides opportunities for sharing. I love this. this. Can I, I'm going to pause you. Part. I'm yeah. going to pause you for just a moment because I want to interject something, and I'm curious if Kyle would agree with me mm. on this. Mm. Because we're practitioners. This is where I want to pause for language. Great. Because as practitioners of experience-based education, we use words like play, interactive, sharing, trust. If you're out there listening, uh, you may have an immediate visceral dismissive reaction. Like if I said, "Hey, you know what? I'd like you to do in your next meeting. I want you to play more." Mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm. This is an official meeting. You know, this, yep. no, this is our Tuesday staff meeting. What do you mean, play more? Yep. So I like that you are expanding our definition of that, kind yep. of looking at play differently. Mm -hmm. But especially now, as we talk about interaction, and and we continue through this model, I want to overlay this with maybe another term, engagement. Yep. Because hmm. in the workplace, we might use the word engagement. So in other words, my my premise, and you could disagree with this yep. potentially, but I would say 
hey, if you're out there and you're asking questions like, how do I engage my team more? Mm -hmm. How do I increase team engagement, employee engagement? Yep. This is and uh, this is a way to think of it. Yep. Is that would that be fair? Yeah, I think it is. And uh, I think the play is the tool I'm using to engage people because. Yeah. That visceral reaction when you mm -hmm. mention we're going to play some more is their very limited, narrow understanding of what play is. Play scientifically is a state of mind. Mm -hmm. It's okay. where, uh, where you enter that space of flow, where you willingly want to be a part of it because we, we often have this societal understanding of play as our play. That's childish, yeah. unproductive. It's a waste of time. And there are many clients who often view my proposals when I'm pitching towards something and they say looks a bit childish. It's like, yeah, I get that, but it's not. Yeah. And there are now volumes of research and science that will back up this, that play is actually a critical element in the development of a human being. Mm. Here's a direct quote. So uh, a gentleman who runs the National Institute for Play, Dr. Stuart Brown, he wrote a book about play. He's studied this for years. Mm. And he made this very simple conclusion that play is as critical to the development of a human being as sleep and nutrition. I'll say wow. again, play wow. is as critical to the development of a human being as sleep and nutrition. And no one is going to deny that a human being does not need sleep in well, order I, to develop. But as a parent, I would totally agree with that. Mm -hmm. Like it's instinctively, I agree with that. Like, like in the same way we'd say, oh, my child is not eating right. My child sure. is not sleeping right. If yeah. my child's not playing, mm -hmm. I go, something's up. Like yep. they're huh. not playing. Yeah. So it makes total sense. Yeah. So we, we, we know that sleep is necessary. Yep. In the last 40, 50 years, we now understand the importance of nutrition mm -hmm. towards the development of a human being. Well, the next cab on the rank is play. Yeah. And he's been able to research and document this thing he calls play deficit. Now, this is not a cause and effect, but there's a very strong correlation between many of the people who are incarcerated have a massive play deficit. Now, we're not saying someone who doesn't play is going to end up in jail, but there is a strong correlation hmm. from his research, scientifically proven and peered, to understand that many people who are incarcerated never learned those social skills, those social-emotional learning wow. skills through play, through play. Huh. in wow. the sandbox when they're at school or in their family's yard or at the Christmas party, whatever it is. They never had opportunities or never took up those opportunities, or if they were there, they never felt safe to play. That's the play we're talking about. So you mean when my mom made me get outside and play, she was really onto something? Yep. She was nailing it? Mm -hmm. Way to go, Mama Mer. Yep. Way to go. Absolutely. Okay. We didn't understand it empirically yeah. <laughs> with a scientific <laughs> background, but it's absolutely critical. Wow. And so, again, this is a fact. This is not something I've just made up, and that's why the base of this this grow growth model starts yeah. with play. But, but that play doesn't stop for us, then. No. Okay, it continue. Shouldn't. This is great. It this shouldn't. is great stuff. We do, though. We, add, we become adults and we actually remove play. We think it's actually childish. So when you go to a client and they say, oh, what? Play? It looks a bit unproductive. But what they discover is what happens in those moments of play is actually transformative. It really transforms people's relationships. So it starts with that interaction. It provides opportunities to interact because they're engaged. It's fun. They've got nothing to lose. They're not going to be threatened. Interaction leads to opportunities to share. Mm. Now, the difference between these two is one's inside the comfort zone. If you understand that concept of where everything you're doing in this space, I'm feeling safe, I'm feeling successful. Sharing involves some level of vulnerability. That's the third level. Because from interaction to sharing, from sharing you move to trust. Now, where most people, teachers, corporate trainers, camp leaders, whoever, they move from interaction. They get the concept of, yeah, I can see how this is useful, interacting, building relationships, and then they go jump straight to trust. And they wonder why they meet resistance. It's because we haven't invited them to be vulnerable in small ways, gradual ways, graduated ways, to actually start to learn more about each other, to be challenged, to step outside their comfort zone. So opportunities for interaction provide sharing. Sharing then builds trust and we would all agree there is no significant relationship that is powerful without a layer of trust the final the peak of the triangle if you can imagine it in that context is growth learning development whatever you want to call it if you're just in the world of recreation or having fun you don't need this model you just have fun that's at the very base level but if it's about actually making a difference in someone's life or a difference in the performance of a group 
then mm. growth, learning and development is where it's at. It's, it's in, that, in that stretch zone, the zone of proximal development, uh, as you would understand. Yeah. Mark, I have a follow up question. Uh, yeah. You, you know, you kind of start off with that play level and, you know, you mentioned uh, a lot of people that you work with may want to jump straight to that trust, mm. uh, maybe even skipping kind of the play level. Yep. A lot of times I've, I've Lots encountered of that, that yep. <laughs> in my work. How mm. do you um, if you had a message to those people out there that are like, you know, we don't need play. Mm -hmm. we, we just want trust. Yep. How do you convince them of that? I can't convince them, hmm. but I might influence a decision. Okay. Uh, and sometimes it comes through an experience, but I'll talk about stories. I'll talk about the results that I've seen. Some of the most powerful team building, quote, quote, you know, events that I've held have been simply inviting a group to interact, share, and play. Hmm. That's it. And what they discover in that time is all of those moments of interaction and sharing and building trust was actually developing team because this concept of team was really just about helping people feel more cohesive, feeling that they're more comfortable in this space and that they've got a role and a valued, seen and heard. Mm. That for many people won't because maybe they're remote, maybe they don't you know, sit on the same floor as each other, they're, they're spread. But when you put them together, more often than not, face to face, you've got opportunities to do all of those things and then next time Jim calls, you know, it's like you've got a picture of Jim. You can remember that answer to a really bizarre question. It's like, wow, I didn't know about that. You know, that's always fascinating. So for me, when I'm talking with those clients who really just want to, why can't we just go straight to the team building or go straight to the trust building? Well, first of all, there's a process. So I honor that mm. process and I will, if that doesn't work for the client, it's like, great, I'm not a good fit for you. But let me tell you what happens when you let that go. I don't go to my mechanic to have my teeth inspected. You know, mm. you go to an expert and if this is my expertise, trust mm. this is a process I'm going to use to be able to achieve your objectives in building those relationships. And the stronger, and this is the other thing, like I know every time I stand before a group, the stronger those relationships, the more it can amplify mm -hmm. whatever we're trying to get done. That is the definition of team building right there. Whatever you're trying to get done, you're amplifying. Well, how do we do that? Well, this is the process. Let's go play. Let's interact and you know, tr uh, you know, build those opportunities for sharing, builds trust. Well, and this is the Good Leader Podcast. And so often when we, when we use that word leadership, that's extremely broad. Mm. That can mean a lot of different mm. things to a lot of different people. But we often share this idea that leadership comes through trust, trust comes through connection. Mm. That, that quick stairwell. Yeah. What, what I like, though, is you're breaking down that connection stairwell for us yep. a little bit more and saying, well, that connection piece can begin with this play to grow yep. model mm -hmm. and the importance there because uh, one more thing I want you to touch on that I love play does not also equal competition mm. I think many of us especially um, I don't know if this is kind of a, more of an American idealized <laughs> idea but I think a lot of us when they say play it's like oh like play a sport yeah you know like oh yeah I grew up playing baseball I played basketball I it's play. universal it's mm. okay yeah but that's not that play is not competition mm -mm. can you elaborate on that for a moment yeah, so if you look at the elements of play, like if you look at the research of what actual play is, remember it's a proxy for flow or fun. Like you could, my book, yeah. Serious Fun, was honestly going to be called Serious Flow, but I think people would have mm. confused it as a plumbing manual. Yeah. You know, it, was, <laughs> it wasn't meant to be that. So I use those terms interchangeably, but it's the same thing. Uh, it's about... Ask the question again because I, I, I've, been, I've come off to no, the side. No, that's okay. I, I think many people confuse or use play with competition interchangeably. Yes, Specifically, let's you. think of like a corporate setting where yep. if I said interject play, yep. introduce play for connectivity to build your leadership, to build trust, I think they might say, oh, we do that. We have a competition. Oh, yeah, we yep. do that. We have, we have a lot of fun contests around yeah. here. Winners like, and losers. Winners yeah. and losers. Or like, yeah, sure. we gamify yep. our sales team. We yep. gamify yep. our performance reviews. And for many of the training workshops I run, uh, you get feedback at the end. It's like, oh, Mike, I loved your training. It was so cooperative and there was no competition. It's like I look at them and it's like, what? Were you part of this program <laughs> or not? Yeah. And we look at the list of activities and there was competition all the way through, but mm. it was not our focus. In fact, all of those Olympic high elite athletes – actually use play to help them perform because when they enter an alpha state, again, that's another proxy for play and flow. Hmm. Like when they're relaxed, they're able to do their highest level of performance. And so they would never call it play, but it's the same elements of you willingly want to be a part of it. There's no win-lose. It's just whatever happens, it just is. Uh, there's this a desire to have it continue. 
Mm. There's this element of you don't know what's going on around you. you. You're not unconscious, but you're not conscious of what's happening around you. There are like four or five different elements of the scientific understanding of what flow and play is. And someone who's on the starting blocks for the 100 meter dash wants to be as close to that as possible because there's no stress in their body and they're open to outcome. Like they're, they're gonna use their mechanics to get as fast along that track as they can, better than anyone else. But if you're all tight because you're stressed, there's this competition, that's not playful. That's yeah. not playful. I love that, I love that. Because I think, I think as we think about this, many people would describe their work experiences, specifically their corporate experiences, in the former. Mm. Stressful, mm. tight, oh. you know, pressure. You know, it's like, yeah, I go to work, and it, well, well, because we got to hit this, hit this goal, hit this goal, hit this goal. And there may be moments of pressure. Yeah, there may be moments of that. That you know, it's not like, but that's where this play element is not just. Okay, everybody, go take a break. We're gonna go to a happy hour together. Mm. We're just gonna hang out, mm. and and you know, what I'm saying it's more yep. than that. It's deeper than that. And that's what I love that you're bringing this. That's that's not really team building. Mm. That's just you know this almost like superficial. Do you see that too? Yeah. You know, where yeah. you, like we call that team building. Mm. Yeah, like, oh yeah, we focus on team building. Once a month, we do a happy hour. Yeah. And they're probably already hanging uh, out with the people that they already know. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. There's no intention there. Yeah. Uh, you know, oh, let's just spend the money on this team building event on a barbecue. And they'll all just sit around talking to the same people they talked at in their next door cubicle. Um, okay, I would rather have that event than not have that event, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But why don't you spend the same time and lay an intention over the top of it where you might invite people who don't ordinarily interact with each other an opportunity to interact but give them a reason don't don't force it to happen give them a reason that's where that tool of fun mm -hmm. of play becomes so useful because before they know it they're actually engaging with other people that they didn't think they would yeah that's yeah. the power i love that part you know and i stand before every group going oh this is the one this is the one they're going to work it out you know yeah. i'm the imposter mm -hmm. you know this actually doesn't work there's never been a time in 33 years, Jared, where that hasn't worked out. Yeah. That works. It's a process. Fun just works. It's universal. The process works. I had someone who actually, a full-time team member, ask me one time. Um, I, I, was in, I, was, I was coaching him as a facilitator. He was going to go facilitate uh, early on. And, uh, and, and he was not a, a, an experienced practitioner. And so he was a little bit nervous. And uh, because it was going to be a tough group. Mm. And I said, I, I've worked with tough groups. Tough groups meaning judgmental. This is going to mm. be a judgmental group. They're immediately going to say, oh, yeah, we're going to play and we're going to work through some activities and we're going to build trust. Yep. Any of that phraseology mm -hmm. would have gotten mm -hmm. eye rolls, scoffs. Or, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, let me know when the real meeting begins. Hey, mm. we're spending good money to be here. We're spending good money. Yep. Why are we wasting? And I, I looked at him and I said, here, don't chicken out. You're going to be tempted to chicken out, to back off, not do the activity the way it's intended, you know, shortcut it and, sh and stop. And the thing that convinced him, and I think you'd agree, I said, if I was invited, you know, I've been privileged privileged, and honored to speak in front of a lot of groups and get to do this as a full-time job. If I was invited to the White House to do an event, I said, this is what I would do. Mm -hmm. This is the process. Yep. I would not change it. Mm -hmm. It does not matter who, you know, yep. it does not matter. It, I believe in the process. Yep. This is not a gimmick. Yep. This is not, well, that's kind of for, yeah, you're an educator. You got a background in, in, in high schools. That might work for kids. Mm. This is a boardroom. It's the same process. Yep, people if, are people. They are human with a breath. It's exactly the same. I love that. Well, since we have Mark, we're actually going to go an extended edition. So we're going to have a quick break because when we get back from the break, I want to pick your brain a little bit more. We're going to take a take a quick trip into the inspiration zone before we leave this day. One more quick break, and then we'll finish up with Mark. Octoply toilet paper. When four just doesn't cut it, grab some Octoply. It's basically like wiping with cardboard. Thank you, new sponsor of the show, Octoply Toilet Paper. Kyle, that's one of the most ridiculous bits <laughs> you have. Talk about play. We've yeah, been uh, serious about Octoply Toilet Paper. We've been making this ongoing joke for like eight years. We have. I didn't Sorry, I had to. Started. It Octoply was my chance. Toilet paper. Thank you, Octoply. Uh, chief sponsor of the show right there. I'm never getting action. back on this show. No, enjoy it. All right. <laughs> I want to take a trip into the inspiration zone because, you know, one thing I love about the opportunity to travel, learning from other people, learning from their cultures, learning from other um, learners is what you're reading, what you're watching, what, what's inspiring you right now. So I want to go around the horn. Let me go over there. You ready? I mean, let has just been soaking it all in. I, I mean, ever since from feral camels, we, I think we lost him. He's just been thinking about the camels and going like, <laughs> really? 
Australia's just got 10,000 camels <laughs> running around. <laughs> You that, know? Was, that was a pretty cool fact. I'm it's pretty I'm cool, gonna... right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're going to take a trip into the inspiration zone. The way that it goes is, what's inspiring you right now? It could be a book, a movie, anything. Sweater weather. Am I right, Lim? Mm-hmm. Sweater weather could Sweater inspire you. Weather. So we're going to go around the horn. Uh, we will start. We'll start with you, Lim. Go to right. Kyle. Go to me. Then we'll finish off with Mark. What's inspiring you right now? All right, right now I have been reading a book about the beginnings of the American history. So that oh. has been interesting. It's taking a religious perspective. How okay. Christianity uh, came from England, why Jesus they, you know, all that. So I've been learning about a lot of the beginnings of American history. Okay. Cool. What's the name of the book? Do it you remember is, it? Oh, man. The, the author, his last name is Noel, and I forget the title. Okay. I'm sorry. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> okay. Kyle, what's inspiring you these days? Uh, I just found a book recommendation uh, from an experiential educator on LinkedIn, uh, the book is called The Decision Book. It's 50 Models for Strategic Thinking. Super short read uh, on, you know, kind of a inside fold. One page will be a quick description of a uh, strategic thinking model, uh, and the other side will be, like, the picture of that model. So, for example, they use uh, one of the early ones is, like, the Eisenhower Matrix. Uh, you may be familiar with it as, like, the four quadrants or urgent and important. Oh, okay. So they describe it in like two or three paragraphs That's pretty quickly. That's called Eisenhower matrix? It is. Yeah, President Eisenhower was Eisenhower the one who... Eisenhower came up with it? Yep. Yeah. I've been giving Covey credit. Well, mm. forget Covey. Wow. Eisenhower. I gave old Covey yeah. credit for years. <laughs> Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Maybe he gave Eisenhower credit and I forgot. Maybe so. But, uh, but yeah, so it'll have you okay. know a quick write-up and then on the other fold, the other uh, side of the page, it'll be a quick you know little picture of it. Excellent. Okay. It's a great book. I lied. I'm going to go last. Mark, what is inspiring you these days? So many things, okay. but I'm going to stick to the I book. Hope. I'm going to stick to you the book. You can give me more than one, by the way. Oh, okay. Well, well, you're, only, you're, you're, you know, you're only here every nine years, so you got to... So I'm going to give you nine years of inspiration. Th- that's nine years <laughs> of inspiration right here. Book, uh, Buy Back Your Time uh, by Ooh. Dan Martell. Hmm. Uh, I've now read it three times, most recently, across the Pacific on my way here. Uh, he is my coach. I've taken on an executive coach. He has a program that is phenomenal. The concept here that inspires me is about don't hire for growth, but hire to buy back your time. Wow. I love this. Because we often hire okay, people. Okay, that kind of blows my mind. Yeah. And, I and, love it. And it's about uh, being sure that you hire to buy back your time so that you can end up doing the things you love and that inspire you. So wow. I'm inspired to be inspired. Now, and, and so it's a step-by-step approach. Uh, it's super practical. You know, I just spent three days with the guy earlier this week. Yeah. And it, it was pretty awesome to actually meet the guy, even though I've seen him online many, many times. So, look, th- that's one level of inspiration. The other, at another end of the scale, is my little boy, Devin. Oh, I love it. Inspires I love me. It. Like, he is the epitome of joy. Oh, you know, I remember dedicating good. the most recent book to him and my wife, Jill, but he just loves to play. He would rather not go to school, uh, but I don't when he's at school, he wants to play. So I'm always reminded and inspired by his essence. His spirit is about play. Always inspires me. That's good stuff. Well, I want to finish with I'm inspired by Playmio because Mark is sitting right in front of me. I'm inspired for many reasons. Namely, I've seen your entire journey from inception, creation, all the way up to now. Playmio.com, tens of thousands of subscribers and visitors from all across the globe. Check out playmeo.com. I'm specifically inspired today because over the last couple of days, I've been reacquainted with some of the resources there. This is not a sales pitch. Number one, I don't get a dime from Playmeo. Uh, you know, we might be able to change that, but we'll figure that out. We'll talk later. We'll talk later. <laughs> but playmeo.com slash free. Is yep, that right? That's exactly it. If you go to playmeo.com slash free, if you're listening to this and you're interested in anything that Mark has said today, anything really, if you listen to this podcast, you probably like the vibe of what we're doing. Check out playmeo.com slash free. Amazing resources there. Ebooks, games, activities. Because if you're sitting there, Mark inspired me today with what difference do I want to make? Now that question, we often take to the highest levels like with my life or what difference do I want to make in the world? I want you to take that question today and make it very small. What difference do I want to make in this staff meeting? Because I think that question can help frame and maybe help you introduce some of these concepts that Mark gave. What difference do I want to make? This is not just for announcements. This is not just to say we did it. So many meetings we go through and people get frustrated. They say, well, this could there's, the, there's now a cliche of like that this meeting could have been an email. Don't make it, don't make that mistake. And it's because we're not asking that question proactively 
What difference do I want to make? What, what do I want my participants, your coworkers, your team, your peers, even if it's just a group of 10 people, a project, you're on a project together over the next hour that we're going to meet, over the next two hours, however long it is, what difference am I hoping to make? And forcing yourself to answer that question will improve your meetings. Use this play to grow model and ask, how can I introduce play, flow, fun, to get people to interact, to give them an opportunity to share, which will in turn build trust and create that growth that we are wanting to see. Just taking these small changes. And if you're out there asking, that sounds really good, theoretically and philosophically, I have no idea where to start. I don't have a background in this. I have no idea what to do. Here's where you start. Playmeo, that's P-L-A-Y-M-E-O.com slash free. Get you started. Check out the videos. Check out the resources. Go out there and be a good leader.